first official day of autumn comes next week, and this is typically a quieter time of year if the tropics behave. Wet season in Florida has been active of late, and other areas of the southeast have received some welcome rain. Jeff, Chris, and I will provide an update for everyone in the September edition of the Water Resources Outlook. Let's begin with Jeff talking about the climatology. So here's the 30-day precipitation departure from normal across the southeast. And we see for the most part we had close to the normal amounts for most areas. The Florida Peninsula saw scattered areas of above normal precipitation as well as Georgia and the South Carolina coast as seen in the purple areas. Isolated areas of above normal precipitation in North Georgia and northern Alabama can also be noted. Um, that Mobile, Alabama area is the only pocket that we see the deeper reds indicating departures near or above four inches or more. Looking at the summary so far for our tropical systems this season, especially now that we are past the midway point for the tropical season activity, we see the season has not been too active for the Atlantic Basin in the southeast. So far we've only had one system affect the southeast and that was in that was Tropical Storm Anna back in May. Otherwise, it has been as expected, a quiet season so far. So given the precipitation and lack of tropical activity, what do our stream flows look like? Brought to you by the U.S. Geological Survey. Well, we see below normal stream flows in much of the Carolinas, especially South Carolina rivers, in addition to several of the smaller Gulf Coastal area rivers. Above normal stream flows are evident across central and southern Florida. Elsewhere, like across Georgia and the larger rivers in Alabama, rivers are running near normal. So where does that leave the drought situation? Not much change from a month ago. We've had a slight expansion across parts of southern Alabama, but we still see severe drought continuing across South Carolina and into western portions of North Carolina. We have seen the extreme drought conditions that we had back in early August down in South Florida uh, now has alleviated with all the rain down there in August and recently here in September. So no extreme drought conditions in the southeast right now. And then flipping over to flooding, we see the river flood climatology, as we always show you, and we are in week 38. And uh, we see here in the middle of our, we're in the middle of our typical secondary flood season, which in a few weeks here, uh, typically river flooding is non-existent as you go, as you see there in week 42 and, and 43. Uh, so most of these river floods this time of year are in central Florida. And as we see down there, the river flood climatology, we see that typically we have another week of active flood weeks. Uh, but by October, river flooding really cuts off as we move away from the wet season down there. With El Nino, this typical period of lower river flooding may be short-lived, as Todd will be talking about here later. And we will discuss, discuss further in our next water resource outlook as we talk on El Nino and stream flow in the southeast. So please stay tuned to that one as we'll be, as that'll be interesting for all. But before that, here's Chris. All right, let's take a look at what we can expect over the next week or so across the southeast U.S. We're going to start the period with an area of high pressure across much of the northern portion of our forecast area through northern Alabama, Georgia, and up through the Carolinas an area of low pressure down in the Florida Peninsula and then east over the Atlantic. As we go through the short term period, we're going to see that area of low pressure start to shift eastward uh, over the Florida Peninsula and it looks like this area of high pressure is going to be weakening by the time we get to the end of the short term period. We're expecting a cold front to start to move into the southeast and that's going to set the stage for the midterm period where we're expecting more in the way of precip as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, better chances for precipitation further north across the area, more widespread precipitation uh, across the southeast. By the time we get to the end of the midterm period, the upper level low associated with that front, which is now over the Atlantic, will be over the southeast U.S. and that's what this model depiction is expecting. Looking at the seven-day precipitation forecast, we're expecting the highest amounts down in the Florida Peninsula, and a lot of that is in the, the short term. We have a secondary max over like northern Georgia and western South Carolina associated with that front that moves through and then the associated upper-level low-pressure system. Looking into the long term, 
we can expect below normal precipitation amounts over the northern portion of the area and above normal over the Florida Peninsula. With where the models are expecting this upper level low to be at the end of the midterm period, we can expect uh, an area of high pressure to be behind that again. And then it still looks like uh, abundant moisture down in the Florida Peninsula. Chris took us to the end of September, and now let's look at October's chances for rain. With an inactive hurricane season, and yet we are approaching the season when El Nino will begin to have an impact, an equal chance for above normal, near normal, and below normal precipitation for the southeast makes sense right now. I would expect October to be similar to September, just a bit cooler. That means a few areas will be above normal, a few below, as we head into late fall and winter, where El Nino conditions will have a far greater impact on our weather and, in turn, our rivers. The current sea surface temperatures in the Pacific remain above normal, and based on the model ENSO predictions, we are approaching peak El Nino conditions in the coming months, with an ultimate peak sometime in December. If this pans out, a strong El Nino is expected, and what have past El Ninos brought us? Well, here's a graphic from our friends that issue the Browning World Climate Bulletin. And it certainly shows that in the past, when there has been a strong El Nino, rainfall has been above average during the December to February time frame. The most recent instances in the 1997-1998 year and the 2009-2010 year showing significant wetness across the, across the southeast. So how does the Climate Prediction Center's forecast compare with the past? Well, very closely. The October through December rainfall forecast is leaning towards normal rainfall over above normal rainfall over all of the southeast. With the October forecast being near normal, that means the November and likely December forecast should have a much increased chance of above normal rainfall. The January through March forecast is a very interesting one. Typically, during an El Nino, there is dryness in the Ohio Valley that dips down into Kentucky and Tennessee. However, this forecast has the dryness dipping all the way into in Mississippi with a very strong gradient between above and below normal precipitation. It would seem that if the current El Nino forecasts held out, hold out, then these forecasts should be very consistent in the coming months. And so the bottom line. In the short term, it looks like it will be quieting down for most of the southeast. Again, as I mentioned before, a little bit above normal rain, a little bit below normal rain, but very near normal in the short term. Um, still a late active wet season for Florida. Looks like it will finally be coming to an end over the next week or two. So it looks like that will be changing over the next couple weeks and it will get a little quieter. As for the long term, El Nino will continue to dominate the long term. Should start getting much more active as we get to mid-November. Next month, we will have the live Water Resources Outlook on October 20th at 1 p.m. addressing the El Nino forecast for winter. We will send out a notification with all the information you'll need to attend that webinar. Thanks for listening. Again, if you have any questions or comments for us, you can contact Christopher, Jeff, or I, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And if you know anyone who wants to be added to this uh, mailing list, please contact me and we will make sure and get them on there. Thanks again.